Hello gorgeous soul, welcome to your monthly June Astrology. I'm so sorry for the delay in getting this up. But first, before I begin, I would like to express my heartfelt solidarity to what is going on in America. Witnessing the horrendous death of George Floyd, which basically, this stuff goes on all the time. It happened to be get caught on camera, which has created hopefully the whole world ready to stand up and say enough. We are all equal. We cannot live in a society where black people are treated in the way that they are. It is horrendous and it has to stop. So I understand that, all, you know, what is going on at the moment. I also understand every people have got very different viewpoints about the way it should be handled. But we are in an astrological time where there is a revolutionary energy in the air. Now, of course, the revolution can happen and manifest in many ways. But thanks to Saturn going into Aquarius and later on Jupiter going into Aquarius and eventually Pluto going into Aquarius, the whole world is changing and we are heading towards a more egalitarian society where all of us hopefully will be treated equally and it will be a much fairer society. We are right in the storm at the moment, but if we all stand together for a quality for love and we speak the truth that enough is enough, we all have to be treated equally, then we will, this wave of change will happen much more quickly and easily. You know, I believe we should all come from our heart chakra, but we are waking up to the fact that the world is changing and we need to be in an egalitarian society. We're in full on retrograde season at the moment. And on top of that, it's eclipse season. It's about things happening, like for instance, this full moon right at the beginning of June, but we don't see exactly the power of it until afterwards. I urge everyone towards peace, towards love and to making a soul change for the benefit of us all. Here's your monthly astrology. Aries, my darling, one bit of good news this month. I'm gonna to cut to the chase. We're Aries, we want the good news now. It's that Mars is going into our sign, thank goodness. But for most of this month, we've got Mars in Pisces which doesn't really suit us. It's good for spirituality, it's good for going within, it's good for stopping us a little bit, but it kind of waters us down. And if you take up sort of, you know, spiritual sport, like really tough yoga or full on meditating, you really will benefit from that. But other than that, go within and look at what's going on at the moment because you're at the end of a cycle, yeah? We, we, we're moving into a space where your energy is coming back round, where we have Mars in our sign and we're ready to rock and roll and we're ready to have our warrior spirit stirred again. But right now, we might not know what's going on, particularly also as Mercury, the planet of communication, is in retro shadow and then goes retrograde. You know, conversations and situations are all a bit woolly. We don't know where our boundaries are. Also, you might find yourself caught up in an erotic or sensual conversation with someone and it's either it's inappropriate because one of you's in a relationship, in a committed relationship, or there's some reason why you're not really sure, does this person mean what they're saying? You know, where are they going with this? When it comes to the eclipses as well, it's kind of very, very full on. The first, the first eclipse is obviously this Sagittarius full moon. All, I'll put all the dates in the um, thing above, if not Google them, but. The full moon is Sagittarius, I think it's around the 6th, is intense because this eclipse is bringing up our emotions. On the one hand, we want to be fiery. It's a, normally a very optimistic moon for us, but with the eclipse and with the opposition to Venus and the square to Mars, we've got extreme feelings and extreme emotions. I mean, let's face it, this is a very extreme month in all sorts of ways. The whole world is going through a transition, is going through a transformation, is going through... You know, a lot of turmoil and for you you might have like very extreme reactions to what's going on try and keep um, your warrior of love spirit alive within you and if you're feeling an extreme reaction to a partner or you, you feel like losing your temper just be careful you got the facts right well careful you got the facts right and obviously be careful how you express yourself in love relationships because venus the planet of love is going retrograde is going backwards so there's a lot of 
thinking about the past when it comes to relationships. A lot of a, a sense of, you know, what were my relationships like with an ex-lover? Maybe even ex-lovers getting in touch. And then with this full moon, there may be confusions about your feelings for your current lover, for an ex-lover. There may be a feeling within yourself that you have to make changes. But these changes need to be fundamental. They need to be about our relationship with ourself as well, well as rela our relationships with other people. Um, now, there's a lovely little aspect around the 4th of June where the sun is coming together with Venus and you are very charming around that point. If you want to get your point across this month, the best time to do it is on June the 4th. Otherwise, things get a bit more dicey because other people love being around you and they love to feel your energy. Um, hold on one second. There's also a deep healing going on as Venus retrograde is sextile Chiron, the wounded healer. You're thinking about the past and you're thinking about the way you used to think actually and the way you used to communicate and perhaps the way you communicated in relationships and there's a profound change going on. Perhaps you'll talk to an ex-lover or there'll be a conversation you have maybe just with a friend about the past and it feels as if something's shifting, as if something on a very very deep level is healing, freeing you to love in a new way. So that's exciting. The sun goes into, oh also the sun is conjunct the north node on the 20th and then the sun goes into Cancer. So this is an amazing time where you'll get a message about your future self, about where you're going in the future and how to get there. And you might be surprised by what you suddenly decide that you want to do or how you want to evolve your journey and the direction of your life. Very, very exciting. When the sun goes into Cancer, it's always the time of year where you think about nurturing, nurturing yourself, nurturing other people, being around your home and having all the cosy comforts that are important to you. So that's the general vibe. But again, we're having an eclipse uh, quite quickly, actually. The day after the sun goes into Cancer, we have the new moon and the solar eclipse. So there's a change, a change in what you perceive your home to be, a change in your perception of what's important and a big shift in energy connected to your home or family. It could be quite a radical shift. It, you may move, you may terminate a relationship, with somebody in your family you may rekindle a relationship with someone in your family but it's something quite end and beginning e there's that vibe to it um, neptune goes retrograde and that's not a bad thing it actually makes us more realistic and then we have um venus going direct on the 25th of june which is great news because it's like oh we don't have to deal with the past we can get excited about the future we can get excited about expressing ourselves and expressing ourselves as we truly feel in the now rather than going over old ground uh, mercury retrograde is you know a pain in the bum this month but what's really exciting for you is when mars goes back into aries yeah baby you feel like yourself again we got our energy back do you know what actually thinking about it i'm really feeling that mars in pisces that ex i've just realized it explains a lot for me it's exhausting darlings exhausting i have not felt my perky self and I've had all sorts of strange little irritating ailments. I think that is Mars in Pisces. So, you know, I too am looking forward to getting my va 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 voom back and my passion and my power. Uh, now, the big news of this month, I think, is when we have Pluto and Jupiter conjunct. Now, this month, we're going to see, I believe, a big shift in COVID-19, one way or the other way. I mean, I haven't got much faith in the UK government. They have not handled this well. And we're one of the worst places because, really... Oh, don't even talk to me about that. But anyway, one way or the other, when Jupiter and Pluto come back together for that meeting, there is change and shift. On an individual level, we have an opportunity to let go of the past and grow and expand. But on a collective level, this meeting again could go one way or the other. Otherwise, other, the peak comes back or literally it goes and we all feel, feel much freer. But I would imagine that June is a bit up and down other than that for, for the COVID situation. Anyway, I'm also hoping that there will be, with the meeting of these two things, a positive change. Pluto is about transformation and finality, and Jupiter is about expansion. It's very important none of us go to kind of extremes of wanting power. It's about the humanitarian Jupiter moving to a position where we open up. And actually, for you, it's around your career. Do look at your rising signs, though. That's very important. 
Anyway, I send you so much love. Come and see me on Instagram, at Michelle Knight. Take care, gorgeous, and I'll speak to you soon. Hi, gorgeous. Before you go, check out my new film on my fabulous psychics. A lot of people ask me for readings. I don't do them anymore, but for over 20 years, I've had an award-winning team of psychics that I truly handpick. So check out the film, let me know what you think. The purpose of a reading, I feel, is very much to inspire people and to empower people. It's about hope. It's about guidance. Using a phone or being with you, it will be the same because the matter is spiritual. It's very important for me that the client feels spirit with them. So it was a psychic reading. I don't remember the readings right after because it's not myself giving that, it's actually coming from spirit. And it is a bit like a three-way conversation. I've got the person on the phone, I've got me, and I've got another voice that's telling me things. I even shock myself, things that I come up with, and I think, how did I, I get that? I'm channeling messages only for, for one purpose, to, to help people. It's been able to help somebody have a map back to where they've got lost from. My priority is to connect to your truth and have the best life that you can have. I think in my readings people feel a sense of a safe space where they can really be themselves, let go. You need a feeling of being understood because reading should be empowering. I will make sure when the reading is finished that you're happy with everything. I, I couldn't do anything else. It's, it's, it's part of who I am. It's what I came here for, obviously. And when they come back and tell you they've got their dream job or the love of their life, that really makes me feel like I'm valued. I love to hear a sigh of relief. A lot of weight has been lifted off their shoulders. We have the answers that we are looking for within ourselves. I know I have the tools to help you. Everything begins and ends with you.